in the land of Umudike, where milk and honey flow, in a kingdom blessed by nature and mineral resources, there lived a farmer called Emeka. Emeka lived with his two wives, Ifunaya and Udoka. The two women were always at loggerheads. To put a stop to their disagreements, Emeka built two huts separate for his wives, but that did not stop their quarreling. Ifunaya had a daughter called Adana, while Udoka, the second wife, had a daughter named Ngozi and a son named Onika. Their mother's disagreements did not stop the three children from being close. They played and went to school together. It was hard to tell that they had different mothers as they grew. Adana became more plumpy. She enjoyed eating large portions of food. She was bullied by her classmates, except her siblings and a new friend she had made in school named Oluchi. Oluchi would always try to protect Adana from the bullies. They would always call her names Fat Girl and Fatty Bom Bom. But Oluchi and Ngozi always defended Adana. Adana felt so safe with them. She was the apple of her father's eyes. Chief Emeka loved his first daughter, Adana. He gave her the best of everything. This caused a big rift between Ifunaya, his first wife, and Udoka, his second wife. Adana was so intelligent, but her low self-esteem could be smelled from miles away. She shied away from activities and always played with Oluchi and Ngozi, her stepsister. Adana grew to be a fat lady, but she was good in business. She started making money and helping her father to train her siblings. She would take Ngozi, her stepsister, on her trips to purchase her goods for her store. She sold groceries to make ends meet. She would always tell Ngozi and Adana her dreams of becoming a great producer and supplier. One day, while she was on her way to her store, as she walked past, some villagers mocked her. They called her names, Fat Woman, Fatty Bomb Bomb, and Lose Weight. They pointed at her and continued with the mini remarks. She could not raise her head. She quickened her legs to get to her store. Suddenly, she heard a voice behind her. Don't mind them. Raise your head high. You are so beautiful. She turned around to see a tall, built man. He looked like he had been walking for a while. Thank you, said Adana. She could not help smiling at the young man who stood before her. Are you okay? You seem like you have been walking for a while, asked Adana to the young man who complimented her. Yes, I am fine, but I would not mind some water, replied the young man. Adana asked him to follow her to the store. They got there and she gave him some water. He drank to his fill and introduced himself. I am Afame Funa, but you can call me Afam. Adana smiled, looking at how handsome Afam was. She was grateful he found her beautiful despite her plump size. This is my store. I sell groceries, but I hope to expand soon, she told Afam. Afam nodded as he looked at the beautiful store Adana had. You have done well for yourself. I should get going as I have a long journey ahead of me, he told Adana. Oh, where are you going to? Adana asked. I am going to the neighboring village, Umweze village. I have been looking for work for some time now. I have asked the traders to take me in as I am hardworking, even the farmers, but none wanted an extra hand. I have six siblings to feed and a mother who has a small farmland she is managing. Afam bent his head in worry about what to do next. If you do not mind, you could help me bring my goods from the neighboring village. I had to take days off to do this. I am supposed to restock at the end of the day, but because I have no one, I schedule days to get more goods to stock in my store. I will pay you handsomely, said Adana, reassuring Afam. Chimo! Thank you so much, replied Afam. He was so delighted and could not hide his happiness. They bade goodbye as Afan went to share the good news with his family. 
The next day, even before Adana got to the store, Afam was there. She was shocked to see him so early. Afam, did you sleep at all? Adana teased him. He smiled at her and told her how he could not wait to start. He was grateful for the job as it came when he had nothing. He had just lost his father and his family looked onto him as the provider. Afam came from a family of six. He was the first and only son with five sisters. His mother could barely do much as old age weighed on her feet. His sisters were still schooling and most of his funds went into taking care of them. Adana opened the store while Afam set out to get more goods from the neighboring village. This continued for months. One afternoon, while Afan was on his way to get goods from the neighboring village, Oluchi, Adana's best friend, came to pay her a visit. Adana, the biggest businesswoman, says Oluchi as she hailed her friend. She sang songs of praises. Adana could not help it and started dancing. She swayed her hips from left to right. You, my friend, you have a sweet mouth, Adana told Oluchi. They giggled and laughed. That reminds me, I keep seeing a young man who carries goods into the store every day, Oluchi told Adana, with an inquisitive expression on her face, wanting to know more. Oh, yes, he's my new staff. He needed the money, so I offered him the job. Besides, it has helped reduce the stress of closing the store anytime I need to get more goods. I now make lots of profits. People keep buying, Adana said happily. Oluchi smiled, happy for her friend. Do you like him? Has he said anything to you? Where is that coming from? Adana laughed. With my plum size? I will be shocked if a fine man like him decides to settle with me. I am only grateful for the kindness he has shown me. He has not ridiculed me of my stature ever since I met him. Well, that is a good sign. And it is good too. Oluchi teased Adana. They laughed over it. Adana got to her heart and thought about all Oluchi had said. Could it be that Afam liked her? And if he did, why had he not said anything? It has been six months since he started working for her. She knocked the idea off her head as she laughed at herself in the mirror. Who would want a woman this big? She laughed at the thought of it. And soon, she started crying and feeling sorry for herself. She got up much later, wiped her tears and got to the kitchen. She made pounded yam and a goosey soup. She relaxed in her room to eat till she finished the huge portion. She slept and snored loudly. One day, while Adana was in her store, the king's drummer, Uche, was passing by and saw Adana. He was so captivated by her beauty. He went to her store in pretense to purchase groceries. Beautiful woman of Umudiki, I would like to buy some yam. Adana was flattered and selected good yams for Uchi. Every day after Uchi had paid for the royal family, he would pass Adana's store. He could not help but notice how lonely and sad she looked when she was alone. He would always go in pretense to buy something even when he did not need it, just to chat with Adana and make her smile. This always worked like charm. Soon, Adana got used to it and she told Oluchi and her sister about Uche, but they discouraged her not to put her hopes up since he had not asked her to marry him. One day, while Adana was preparing to close her store, Afam, her new staff, disclosed his feelings to her. I want to marry you. I have grown a soft spot for you. You are a hard-working and industrious woman with a good heart, said Afam. Adana was surprised. Afam, are you pranking me? She laughed and wanted Afam to call the joke. She had always seen herself as unattractive. What could be attractive about her? Adana, Afam called her as he held her hands. 
I love you and I want to marry you. Adana could see the seriousness in Afam's eyes. She was surprised and lost for words, but she could not risk Afam changing his mind. She was afraid that if she told him to give her time to think of his proposal, he might change his mind. Or she might get fatter and become unattractive to him. Yes, Afam, I will marry you, said Adana hurriedly. Afam was delighted and hugged Adana. Adana went back home that day, happy. She could not hide her joy and went to tell her father, Chief Emeka. Adana was his favorite among all his children. He loved how hardworking and respectful she was. In Kem, Emeka called his daughter, which was his favorite name he usually used to call her. Papa answered Adana as she smiled from ear to ear. This is good news. When does he plan to come and see us? He asked her. We are yet to discuss it. But when he's ready to come, I will let you know, Adana told her father. He sang songs of praise to her. Adana loved dancing and just as she danced, the second wife, Udoka, could not help but get jealous of how Chief Emeka adored Adana despite her size and stature. Well, until they come, we should not rejoice yet, Udoka said scornfully. Udoka had a venomous tongue. She was known throughout the village for her bad manners. Chief Emeka married her because he wanted more children and Ifunaya, his first wife, could not bear him more children. I wonder which man would want to marry you, Udoka continued mocking Adana because of her size. You are only good because of your money. Udoka spat on the floor in disgust and went back into her hut. Adana was hurt by that statement, but she did not let it stop her happiness. Her father consoled her. She told her father good night and retired for the night. Adana woke up a happy woman. She went to the store earlier than usual. While she was singing and dancing as she was arranging the groceries, she heard someone singing alongside her. She turned around to see it was Uche. Uche, what brings you to the store this early? Adana asked. I should be the one asking, as I usually go to the palace this early, and your store is never opened, said Uche. Well, I am in good spirits, Adana replied to him. Good to see let me get going. I am meeting up with my best friend today after work in the palace. I might not be passing in this direction before you close for the day, but I am so glad you are happy, Uche responded, smiling sheepishly. Even a blind man could tell that he was captivated by Adana's beauty and was deeply in love with Adana. But Adana could not tell as she could not see herself to be beautiful enough to attract any man. Uche said his farewell to Adana and left. That evening, after Adana and Afam finished at the store, Afam invited Adana to his house. Adana was excited as Afam was intentional in her, knowing more about him. They walked to Afam's house, giggling and laughing. The villagers could not help but stare at the lovebirds. As soon as they got to Afam's house, Adana could not hide her shock as she saw Uche sitting in front of Afam's hut. Meet my bosom friend Uche, said Afam. Adana smiled in recognition. Meet my betrothed. I have proposed marriage and she has accepted. Afam said with pride to Uche, his best friend. Uche was shocked. Is this the woman that Afam had been talking about all this while? He wished he had proposed sooner instead of hiding under the disguise of a good customer. Adana, congratulations, Uche told her. He turned to Afam. Maybe I should take my leave and let me let you two love beds. My good friend, I will see you soon, Afam responded to Uche. He continued to chat with Adana as they ate and laughed. He cooked for her and served her, treating her like his queen. Afam constantly showed Adana how much he loved her. Months passed and Adana's business kept on growing. 
she had made a profit and wanted to expand her business adana discussed this with her best friend oluchi and stepsister ngozi oluchi thought it was an innovative idea and encouraged her to expand her business but ngozi told adana that expanding would take her far away from home why don't you wait till i am done with school so you can take me with you adana told her that she would think about it that night adana was happy and ate herself full but ngozi her stepsister could not sleep she had just started an affair with afam and she thought of how adana gets everything good what if afam does not break up with adana as he had promised her thoughts ran through her mind afam had told her they had to be secret till he got his own business to him adana was a means to an end the next day adana went to the store happy and excited to share her plans with afam before she could speak afam told her that there was something important for them to discuss ada my queen how are you doing today afam asked her i am fine and you you look worried is everything okay adana asked concerned about afam's long face you know it has been 18 months since we were betrothed the money we make from the store is good but i want to start a business as a man i should have a business to be able to provide for you and our children said afam i understand so have you found what you want to do you have still not come to see my parents concerning the marriage matters adana told him afam caressed adana's face he reassured her that once he made it in his new business he planned to start the marriage rights by making adana his wife he reassured her that he would pay her bride price in full until then she had to remain in her father's house trust me adana i have big plans i just need some money to complete what i have i have saved a lot of money but the business requires huge capital afam told her adana thought of the money she had saved to expand her business would it be a good decision to give it all to afam while her story remains the same way he is her betrothed what harm could come from it she thought to herself in a haste adana responded to afam i have some money i have saved up i will give it to you afam eyes lit up finally his plans were taking form he would start this business and become very wealthy afam said my perfect bride thank you for always supporting me adana went to oluchi to discuss her change of plans but oluchi showed her displeasure she told adana that her decision to give afam all her life savings was not logical i do not think you thought this through my friend you are letting yourself be led by your emotions how could you give him all your life savings asked oluchi worried about the hasty decision her friend had made adana was displeased by oluchi's tone towards her what exactly is the problem are you jealous of me or would you rather have afam to yourself oluchi was shocked at what adana asked her she told adana and she knew adana was trying everything to keep afam by her side as she could not believe a man would want to marry her with her big size and imperfections i forgive you said oluchi adana told her that there was nothing to forgive as she had made up her mind with or without oluchi's support this is one man who has looked my way but instead of you being happy for me you are trying to tear us down said adana and miss tears adana your low self-esteem has eaten deeper than i thought if you can watch your eating habits and look fit then you will feel better about yourself this man has not come to see your parents after all this time but here you are taking all your life savings to him what commitments has he made to your relationship i am asking you what commitments you feed him and his siblings 
clothe him and even give extra money outside the agreed payment for his job said oluchi oluchi was disgusted at adana's naivety she had tried to make adana work on herself both physically and mentally but adana was consented with afam's love enough shouted adana she walked out of oluchi's hut and went back to her house she got in and laid on her bed adana thought about all oluchi her best friend said could she be right does she have low self-esteem could afam be an opportunist adana shook her head when she imagined afam leaving her afam loves me she said loudly to herself the night was long the next day adana went to see afam in his hut to give him the money but instead she met uchi the king's drama adana it is always a delight to see you said uchi with a broad smile on his face here he goes again the royal drummer with his flattery thong as adana spoke uchi stared at her with so much attention even a blind man could tell that uchi was attracted to adana but she was his best friend's betrothed he knew he could not cross the line afam's father and his father had been best friends afam was not just a friend but like a brother to him he could only desire and appreciate adana from afar i should get going afam will be here soon to keep you company said uche oh no please i hope my presence does not make you uncomfortable asked adana smiling not at all uche responded why don't you drum for me i like dancing it helps the soul you know adana asked uche politely she had such a warm tone that makes people want to do her bidding adana possessed a charming personality and a radiant smile uche nodded in agreement he started drumming and adana started dancing she swayed her heels from left to right she was so big that every time her feet touched the ground it seemed like the leaves jumped from the ground and danced with adana by the time uche stopped beating the drum she was sweating profusely her heart pounded faster with every second adana started laughing i feel like i am floating in the air she said you dance beautifully adana said uche just as they were talking afam walked in he was carrying firewood which he had just cut down uche his friend greeted him and told him he had a beautiful dancer for a wife afam looked at adana in admiration uche spoke to afam briefly about the business that he was about to start he bade afam and adana good night as soon as uche left adana proceeded to give afam all her savings afam here is all my savings the profits i have made in the business over the years adana proceeded to give afam a bag full of money oh beam i knew you would buy the idea i promise to take care of you and love you you will not lack anything adana afam reassured her that evening oluchi adana's best friend decided to pay afam a visit she was not happy with adana's plans to give her life savings to a man who had not shown commitment or ever visited her home she knew adana was swallowed by her low self-esteem and was not thinking in her right mind just as oluchi reached afam's hut, she saw afam holding a woman tightly she tiptoed and clearly saw afam holding ngozi adana's stepsister she has given me the money and i promise as soon as my business picks up i will come and marry you afam told ngozi while caressing her face oluchi's eyes opened wide as she could not believe what she saw you keep saying this afam but every day you go to see adana in her store ngozi told him wearing a frown on her face she is a means to an end nothing more why would i want to marry a fat woman with a terrible eating habit afam told her 
They both laughed and mocked Adana. Ngozi mimics Adana when she came to tell their father of Afam's proposal. I wonder what my father sees in her, said Ngozi. But Afam assured her that she was more beautiful. Afam had met Ngozi the day she came to the store to see Adana. Ngozi was petite, beautiful with a nice stature. She was well built and made heads to turn. Anytime she walked past, Afam approached Ngozi the day he was coming back from getting the stocks. They began their friendship and soon it blossomed into a secret affair. Oluchi was hiding as she watched Afam and Ngozi profess their love for each other. She tried to back off slowly so they do not hear her. Suddenly, she steps on a branch. Afam and Ngozi heard and turned to see Oluchi trying to run away. Oluchi ran, but Afam was faster than her. In a bid to stop her, Afam pushed her. Oluchi fell to the ground. Afam walked towards her, hoping to coerce her not to spill the truth. But when he came closer, he saw that Oluchi had fallen and landed her head on a stone. He was shivering with fear as he came closer and realized she was no longer breathing. He was shot to his bone marrow. Ngozi stood behind him in fear. Afam, what have you done? asked Ngozi. She had goosebumps everywhere. We should take her to the village doctor. Maybe they can do something, said Afam, terrified. He only wanted to stop her from running off to Adana. We can't do that. There will be so many questions asked, Ngozi told him. She knew that the villagers would banish them from the land. Afam reasoned into what Ngozi said and decided to leave Oluchi's body where she fell. Afam and Ngozi went back to their hut, terrified and looking forward to sunrise. The next day, Afam stayed in his hut, waiting for news about Oluchi's death to reach him. In no time, just as he was about to eat his morning meal, Adana came in crying to Afam. She was hurt deeply, as that was her best friend. Afam, Oluchi is dead. They said she fell and hit her head on a stone. Adana cried and wailed. The only friend she had was gone. Afam pretended to console her. Adana mourned Oluchi. Months passed and life continued as normal. Adana gradually reopened her store after she had added more weight. Eating was her only companion. Her father and mother tried to talk her out of it. They tried to talk to Adana about eating healthy, but she could not help herself. They decided to put her on more healthy meals. Adana realized that Afan did not pay regular visits to her in her store anymore, but she figured that it was his new business that demanded his attention. Two years passed and Afan's business kept thriving. He was given a chief title in the village. He thought to himself that he did not need Adana anymore. He was well established and had trained his siblings in school. He has been able to build a house for his mother. He thought for a while and decided to pay Adana off while he married her junior sister, Ngozi. There was no way Adana expected him to marry her. She was fat and shapeless, and she was not the bride befitting for a king like him. He knew Uche, his friend, admired her and thought he would console her. That would be Uche's chance to make his move, he thought to himself. The next morning, he set out to Adana's store with two bags of gold. That was more than enough to pay her for the money and the life savings that she gave him. Adana was excited seeing Afam. Afam, oh beam, you are here early. You must have missed me, she said as she proceeded to hug him. But Afam stopped her. Adana. Something is pressing I must discuss with you, Afam told her. Afam did not look at her the way he used to. Adana was surprised at Afam's mood. Okay, what happened? asked Adana. I do not think we can get married anymore. 
I have thought about it and I think this is the best decision for both of us. Afam said to Adana, handing her the bags of gold. Here is the gold. It covers the money you gave to me to start my business. I appreciate all you have done for me. You have been a great and supportive partner. Afam coldly told Adana, trying not to have eye contact with her. Adana stood still, surprised at Afam's words. She had waited for Afam for five good years. But here he was in front of her with two bags of gold. How could Afam betray her trust and love for him? Where would she start from? She was twice bigger than her usual size and even though her parents and her late friend Oluchi had told her to improve, she thought Afam loved her regardless. She had started eating healthier. She wanted to be better. Why is Afam doing this? She thought. All her years of waiting. Adana wished the ground could open and swallow her. Afam, did I wrong you? It has been five years. Have I not be good to you? Adana tried to hold herself from shedding tears. Afam did not say a word more. He stood up and left the two bags of gold in her store as he walked out. So many thoughts ran through Adana's mind. She wanted to run after Afam, but she stood still, letting the tears flowing from her eyes as she watched Afam walk away. There are so many lessons to pick from the story. There are still great friendships that sharpen you to grow in all areas of life. Proverbs 1824 tells us there is a friend that stays closer than a brother, just like Oluchi and Adana. Ngozi was filled with jealousy because of the favoritism her father displayed with Adana. We should treat and love our children equally to avoid hatred building in their hearts towards each other. What did you learn from the story? Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share to your loved ones. Watch out for the part 2 of this intriguing story. Till we meet again. Bye.